Welcome back everybody to the Law of Tort. In this lesson we're going to introduce the next, uh, the next sorry, of our major topics, which is of course looking at the first major tort for this series, the tort of negligence. Now we're going to take an introduction to the subject of negligence in this lesson before unpacking the first key component of negligence in the next lesson, which is of course the duty of care. So we're going to examine three major issues in this lesson when we talk about the tort of negligence. We're going to ask the question of what negligence actually is, and we come up with a clear, delineated, and uh, descriptive definition of what negligence actually is. Uh, what is the equation of negligence? What are the key components that are required to show uh, a negligence, uh, or to at least have a successful negligence claim? And then the final point is, why is negligence so important? Um, this is going to be able to provide for you a, a basic overview to the subject of negligence, um, to the key components of negligence, as well as the impact and importance that negligence has in the law of tort to this day. So, essentially, for any law student that is uh, studying law in the UK, uh, specifically also within the jurisdiction of England and Wales, you will have to study the law of tort. It is a foundational topic. It is a core module, um, whether or not you are doing an LLB, whether or not you are doing A-level law, or whether or not you are doing a conversion course, whether that be uh, the GDL or the SQE, you will have to study the law of tort. In addition to this, you will also have to study the tort of negligence. It is the most important tort for any law student. Um, one of the reasons for this is, of course, the frequent use in litigation. If you ever um, operate and practice uh, law uh, within uh, within the jurisdiction of England and Wales or within the UK, and you and you practice the law of tort, you will often be doing negligence. In fact, um, people tend to, or at least law firms tend to specialise not necessarily in the law of tort, but they will specialise in specifically negligence claims or specifically defamation claims and so as a result of this the tort of negligence is very very important um this wasn't always the case however the tort of negligence and its frequent use in litigation uh, was not actually always the case in fact the tort of negligence is something which has developed into a unique set of uh, complex and flexible rules and that these complex and flexible rules, this sort of development of negligence, only really takes place in the latter part of the 20th century. And it almost entirely takes place through the common law and the development of common law uh, decision making by the judiciary. Uh, so as a result of this, the tort of negligence is going to require you to have a, a deep and in-depth understanding of various different cases, which we will get to in future lessons time, as well as the development of those different cases and the development of um, the expansion of, of the tort of negligence, as well as it in some cases a contraction of the tort of negligence as well. So we'll get to all of that in future lessons, but for now let's just work out a definition of negligence. Let's work out how we can actually define what negligence is. And a useful definition we can find is in uh, Gillica from 2023, um, and also from uh, from previous editions as well. Um, I have two editions of Gillica, uh, the 2023 one and the 2017 one, and they both um, have this same definition. And this is a definition of negligence, which is um, essentially that they will uh, that the, they say that uh, negligence is a breach of a legal duty to take reasonable care that results in damage to the claimant. That is what is defined as negligence. And it's a particularly nice definition of negligence. It's, it's, you could have different definitions, but um, ultimately what this definition does is give us uh, what negligence is. Because what it does is it unpacks for us, or at least we can unpack from this definition, the various different elements which are required to show and uh, to have a successful negligence claim. Um, and these refer to what are described as the equation of negligence. So let's just read this definition again. It's very short. And let's see if we can pick out the key elements which exist within this particular definition, which essentially are the key requirements for a successful claim of negligence. So it says that negligence is a breach of a legal duty to take reasonable care that results in damage to the claimant. So the idea of there being damage to the claimant is something that exists within the, the vast majority of torts, within all torts, because we're talking about um, uh, claim uh, compensation for wrongs, compensation for damage. Um, 
But the beginning here is a breach of a legal duty to take reasonable care. This here encompasses two fundamental elements and the first two elements of the equation of negligence. The legal duty to take reasonable care is the first element of uh, negligence, is the first requirement. You need to show, if you are going to try and have a successful negligence claim, that there was a legal duty of care. There was a duty to take reasonable care in a particular circumstance owing to the facts of a particular case. The next part of the equation is the breach of that duty of care. So not only do you have to identify that there was a duty of care, but that that duty of care was breached. And that then we move on to the third of those um, major requirements. And this is the resulting in damage. Okay, So we have a, to show that there is a duty of care. We have to show that that duty of care was breached. And then we have to show that the breaching of that duty of care causes damage. We have to have causation here and that that leads to uh, the equation of negligence so this is what we have we have to have a duty of care we have to show that that duty of care was breached and we have to show that that breach caused the uh, damage in question which then therefore results in the potential for a successful claim in negligence that is uh, what we need to show and these are the three component parts of negligence that we're going to look at we're going to begin by talking about the duty of care we will then begin or then we will then talk about all the different elements and, and theories and ideas within that particular context we will then move on to the idea of a breach of a duty of care looking at the standard of care the way in which the standard of care is applied uh, the reasonable person test etc etc and then we will spend a lot of time looking at causation talking about how causation uh, is operational uh, looking at the various different intervening causes that could exist, the idea of remoteness as well, and then all of this comes together to form a successful claim of negligence. So essentially that is what we have. We have to have a duty of care to the claimant, a duty to take reasonable care. That particular duty must then be breached by the defendant, and then the breaching of said duty must have causally led to the damage in question, and then those all together contribute to a successful claim of negligence. The final thing I want to note is that we have a look here at the, uh, the distinction between negligence and intentionality. Because one of the most important things that we can know about the tort of negligence is that it doesn't necessarily imply that the defendant had acted intentionally in their conduct. In fact, it actually implies the opposite of that, that it was not intentional, that negligence was something that um, was um, relating to things like carelessness. It was it was a careless um, cause, uh, a breach of a duty of care, which then therefore leads to um, leads to the, the harm in question. And so this means that uh, negligence does not ensue does not assume intent nor does it require intent for the liability to be found a person doesn't need to intentionally have caused harm to a claimant in order to find a case of negligence intent is actually irrelevant for the most part claims of negligence will be accidental we will get to having a look at different claims of negligence in in future lessons but it is most far for the most part accidental carelessness um, uh, uh, and general uh, incompetence in some cases as well uh, and that's what's important to know that negligence is not intentional it is something that does not assume nor require intent for there to be the showing or the requirement of liability